I first met Kayla probably eight years ago when I rolled into the rehab in her room. She wanted to know just about outdoor stuff because that's usually why I go in to talk to people. And Chad was actually um, what's called a tier peer, so he was the person that kind of talked to me after my injury and we just stayed in contact ever since and he's harassed me a whole bunch, but it's been good. Probably about a year and a half ago or so, she finally gave me the call and, and she goes, I'm ready to go hunting. Let me tell you, my wife inherited this about 25 years ago. I don't know how we got talking to Chad and talking to Chad and talking about turkey hunting. I said, we got turkeys, we don't even shoot them. He said, you know, we're work, working and getting able outdoors started. And I said, hey, let's go hunting. We think how bad it is sometimes. We're very fortunate, very fortunate. You know how lucky we are. I mean, and I'm glad to see what he's doing, helping other people get started back into the real life again. Yeah. With Kayla, we got about four different adaptations happening. This is a, we started it off with a little Caldwell tree pod and she quickly graduated to a, a final rest. Yeah, so there's like a plate underneath my chair that kind of locks into the brackets so it, it can't wiggle. Um, and it keeps the gun real steady too, so it doesn't like bounce back either. I'm ready. We're gonna get something today. I was a little apprehensive about it at first. Uh, it's a lot for me to be out of my own bed for more than a night. It's one of those things where if you want to do something, you just got to deal with it. You want down some more? Yeah, we put it down the front. So. There you go. Before I got injured, I had only hunted um, like at my friend's ranch and we just hunt hogs and it wasn't really anything like how we're doing. I had no idea how it was gonna be afterwards. I wanted to do it pretty much this whole time and um, things are just finally right and falling into place and it's working out great. We had to build pretty much the whole setup. We bought just a, the final rest and um, you know, Drew welded on the, uh, or welded the plate together to just perfectly match my chair. Did you hear that? I think there's one goblin over there. I think so. I'm ready for him. Boy, they're running. They're gonna be here in a second. Oh, I see him. Well, I had absolutely no idea about the sip and puff trigger before we started this, so I was like, how am I even gonna pull a trigger and then we found that and it works absolutely perfectly. That big group of hens was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's really cool to actually see them and be ready for them and you know it does get my adrenaline up really high. Almost therapeutic in a sense. We just need there to be a big gobbler in that group or at least trailing them. Able Outdoors is gonna kick off, and when it gets kicking off good, you're gonna see a lot of young people, it's gonna be able to help a lot of people. And it makes people strive for a little bit further in life and just sitting out, you know, just sitting at home is not a fun deal. Getting out like this on a weekend, having a little refreshments and food, it's fun to do. Chad's done overcome that step of boundary that he knows it can be done now. And he's able to express that to other kids and young people. I'm just ready for one of those four birds to get over here because they have been after us since we got here. But hopefully they'll come over here. They are really cool and they're really cool to see in person. It's like totally different. We're gonna try to get a little sneaky and move down the road where we saw they've been crossing back and forth. Hopefully when they come back tomorrow, and those toms come back, back following those hens. We'll be close enough and get Kayla a shot. Man, I was like, are you alive in there? Oh my gosh, yeah. I don't know what it well, was. I was so worried about one of the turkeys here. I was worried about having to give you the hot <laughs> look on the drive. I don't think you could choke on gummy worms, <laughs> can you? I tried. <laughs> Where'd you get, where'd, who'd you steal the rest from? I had nothing to do with it. We don't even have to open that pie up. Oh. No. Oh no, we are opening the pie. 
Definitely with some over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two toms come by and they skirt it around the decoys. It's a little frustrating that they keep getting so close and um, just not coming to us. But I mean, that's part of it. I do, I do like having to watch them a lot, though. So that part is okay for me. So we're wrapping it up a little early today. Uh, I have a. C3 to S1 fusion, and that doesn't like to sit still very much, so it's given me a little bit of a hard time, so we're probably gonna call it for the day. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, I appreciate Don't you. Don't quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get them. Don't quit. I know. Uh, I was with a group of friends, and um, we had gone to dinner. I was laying down in the back seat and we pulled out um, from the parking lot and the driver made a mistake and turned left um, against traffic and didn't check. We got T-boned pretty much directly where my head was. I got taken by ambulance to Memorial Hermann downtown. I was in ICU for less than a week and then transferred over to Tier and was there for about a month. Actually, I got out on my 18th birthday. That was a lot because I got injured literally a week after my high school graduation. So I had all the plans, I had school lined up, I had everything. It took a long time, even I'm really just recently figuring out what I want to do. So the mental part of that was really, really hard for me because I'm a very hands-on person and not being able to do that anymore is pretty hard. I mean, I just kind of managed to get through it with the people that I have around me. We had been pretty defeated after the turkey hunt failed, but um, Chad had uh, pitched the idea to come out for a deer hunt in the fall and figured to might as well go for it. We got together several times to shoot beforehand. Um, we had to do a lot of trial and error, a lot of fixing things. We had to make sure that the trigger mechanism was working properly without any issues happening. Fast forward six months and we're back out here in Carrizo Springs, South Texas, on uh, my buddy Landon Groff's place. And we're about to go for deer now. And so I told him about Kayla and... I don't think she's ever taken an animal in her life, but she's very interested in hunting. And so that type of person, that's the first one I wanted to get down here. We're going to haul this automatic feeder down, this hopper, fill up a feeder over there where we're going to get Take Kayla tomorrow, fill up the feeder, check out the location, spill some corn, pull some deer in. Landon and I were talking because I knew he had this place and he has it set up for him to be able to function independently out here and has it set up to go fill the feeders, how he has accessible blinds. This ain't for your average everyday quad though. No. It's, it's real deal here. But, I, mean, it's, I mean, it just shows you that if you, if you want to, you know, figure out how to do stuff on your own, this is the way to do it. I got hurt in a car accident driving from uh, Lubbock to San Antonio. I was 19, a few months before my 20th birthday. Uh, rolled a truck, broke my neck, didn't know what happened. Um, never knew anybody in a wheelchair my entire life. What we'll do tomorrow, uh, we'll pop this thing out, but this is gonna be a perfect spot for you to sit up behind her. Uh, we have film crew and her in here, pretty debilitating for any young man to experience something like that. My prognosis was, uh, well, you're a, a C6 quad, and the telltale to that is I've got good wrist extension, don't have any flexion, um, no finger movement, and my prognosis was you're gonna be able to dress the top half of your body and feed yourself. 
And that just wasn't a bright time in my life. It was one of the darkest hours. You know, I needed to know how I was gonna hunt and fish again. The way of living and it's how I grew up. And I, I came across a, a website called Follow Me Outdoors. The gentleman's name was Chad Walagura. Photos of, he had his trigger finger and he had a little prosthetic device made to put his trigger finger back where it belongs on the gun. And at that point, I was like, okay, this is good. And so I, I reached out to Chad, contacted him, and you know, the rest is history. I've known him for, gosh, I've been hurt almost 20 years. And he, he's been a, a big part of my life and in the transition, getting your life back together and finding who you are again. Well, it's going to be a little different because of Kayla's chair. We're going to have to load it up on a trailer and then get her in a vehicle because we're going kind of around the back side of the property. Pick her up, toss her in the truck. That's, a, that's how we do things around here. A little bit more. That's good. We did the turkey hunt. We had basically the setup with the, almost the same setup, but I would just look down the barrel. Uh, this time around, we have what's called a viewfinder. So it's a little camera that attaches to the scope and it's got a little screen that mounts on the top. And I'm able to look, basically see what the scope sees through a little screen on top. We just got daylight cracking. Um, got a few does coming out. We had one pretty small buck come in. Oh, there's a big one right there. As daylight was breaking, we saw some of the does walking around and of course there was a huge buck with them and I remember just being like, I cannot believe that he is walking in front of us right now because he is beautiful. There's a switch on. And I could not believe that, that was possibly about to be my first deer. We just got one. We're only like, we're not even that far in, but we finally got one. So, first kill. That was one of the best feelings ever. It was really good to actually have a shot this time, and we finally got him. It's been total, total vengeance ever since about the turkeys, but the deer is definitely a sweet, sweet victory. Awesome, girl, you got him. Good job, good job. Now get me out of here so we can go find him. Yep. That's good, you can send me down there if you want. The first thing we always do is go roll to where he was standing when you, when you think you hit him. This is the exciting part. <laughs> well, some of it. That's where he dug out, I think, when he shot. They don't make that long skid mark. So he must have been right here. I think he fell right. You see him? I told you he didn't go far. Yeah. There he is right there. Look. Look. Can you see that horn in there? I it's, see it. It's right. It's right past I see that it. limb. It's so awesome. It obviously took a lot of hard work to get here, a lot of preparation, a lot of trial and error, but um, to actually get here and have the kill and be successful with everything is one of the best feelings and just to have everything come full circle was really, really nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's an absolutely incredible feeling. He's gorgeous, and I can't believe this is my first one. It's a nice one for the first one. You got you a beautiful deer. Absolutely. You got you a beautiful deer. Well, she drilled him about, I mean, right where she had to, and that buck was about to go, too, so. Chad has always been really big on getting me back out, and I am very glad that he was because I finally listened and finally got me out here, and it's been a really, really great experience just to finally be back in the outdoors and doing what I love to do and it's paying off and now I have a great feeling and a great memory from this. I hope we created a monster. <laughs>
Oh, absolutely. I knew you'd connect if you kept at it. I didn't think you would connect it with a big 10 20 minutes after first light on the first morning, but what do you think of this boy? <laughs> I know you've been seeing him, right? What do you think of that yeah, one? Didn't get any better than that. So I appreciate you a lot for letting us come out here and do this. Yeah, That's man. what it's all about. It's been a long journey um, from Chad, you know, bugging me to get out here to finally actually getting out and all the yeah. preparation and everything. And it's just been something that I am definitely addicted to now. It's um, something that I always want part of my life and I'm glad that Chad has showed it to me and hope to continue with it. Someone like her that's into it and wants to, to go after it, that's, that's who we want down here. You, you want to give people those memories. With this show, uh, it, it's the next level exponentially of what Follow Me Outdoors was. This is living proof um, that we can get this stuff done.